Joshua chapter 4, verse 24, reads, That all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you might fear the Lord, your God, forever. So here scripture is saying, we need to fear the Lord, and fear the Lord God forever. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. So scripture is saying again, what? We need to fear the Lord. The Bible says, now therefore fear the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And he talks about putting away the gods of your fathers, those that were on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. Well, what's, what's the scripture saying? Stop serving the flesh. Stop serving the world. Stop loving the things of the world. Stop walking after the flesh. And by doing that, what? You'll put away the gods of Egypt. You'll put away the gods on the other side of the flood. But if... 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14. If you will fear the Lord and serve Him and obey His voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. So here again, Scripture saying what? If you fear the Lord and serve Him and obey His voice. Scripture is telling us we need to fear the Lord. We need to have a fear of the Lord. And I'm not talking about being afraid of the Lord, but fear of the Lord. Like, like when God's voice thundered over the mountain, right? And the people trembled in fear. And, and when the Lord wanted to speak to the people, they said, No, entreat Moses to speak unto us. Why? Because we're fearful of you, Lord. We're fearful of you, O Lord. Where did that go? Where is that? Oh, oh God is long-suffering, and, and God is love, and, and, and just love, and, and don't worry about it. No, you need to fear the Lord. If you stay in the flesh and you walk in the flesh, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you love the world and touch the things of the world, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You shall not. You can go to church. You can read your Bible. You can do your religious services. But you are going to be lost forever. Forever. And you're only doing these things. Why? Because you do not fear the Lord. You've lost your fear of the Lord. When I want the blessings of God, and I want God's presence in my life, and I want God's help in my life, then fear the Lord. Fear Him. Because attached with that fear comes much blessing. Attached with that fear comes much spirituality. Much living in the Spirit. Why? Because it will cause you not to touch the world, and separate yourself from the world, and consecrate yourself to God, and not to handle the things of the world, and not to walk in the flesh, because you know you're displeasing God. Second Kings. 17, verse 39. But the Lord your God you shall fear. And if you fear Him, what's He going to do? And He shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. So you want to be delivered out of the hands of all your enemies? Then fear the Lord. Fear Him. Reverence Him. Respect Him. Respect His Word. Respect what He says. Obey it. Submit to it. Don't cast it aside. Don't play with it. Don't mishandle it. When you do that, you show you don't fear the Lord. Why? Because you think He's long-suffering and full of love. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. But to a point. And, and you stay wrong and you do wrong. Why? Because you don't fear the Lord. You've lost your fear of the Lord. But if you want deliverance from your enemies, and you want to be delivered out of the hands of your enemies, then you need to fear Him. Or, or maybe there's no enemies around you. huh? Maybe the enemies uh, removed His weapons from you. Why? To keep you lullabied to sleep. To keep you lullabied in the Spirit. And I want the wisdom of the Lord. And I want the knowledge of the Lord. Well, then listen to Job. And listen to the scripture. Job, Job 28, verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Oh. So now the Bible's telling us that the fear of the Lord, it's wisdom. Right? And the fear of the Lord brings protection from your enemies. And God will fight your enemies if you fear the Lord. And he'll give you wisdom if you fear the Lord. In Psalms, chapter 19. Verse 9, what does it say? What does Scripture teach us? The fear of the Lord is clean. Clean. Enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So what does Scripture teach us about fearing the Lord? What does Scripture say about us fearing the Lord? That if we fear the Lord, this is clean. This is good. This is something that is required. This is not something that is wrong. This is something that is good. 
And, and this fear should endure forever. Twice now scripture is saying it. Fear the Lord. And, and, and you get protection from your enemies. Fear the Lord. And wisdom comes to you. Fear the Lord. And it's clean. And it's enduring forever. Psalms chapter 22, verse 23. Ye that fear the Lord, praise Him. All ye seed of Jacob, glorify Him and fear Him. All ye seed of Israel. Oh, so if you fear the Lord, Scripture says what? You're going to praise Him, right? That's what Scripture is saying. And if you fear the Lord, you're going to glorify Him. Oh, but, but my church body is not praising the Lord. And my church body is not glorifying the Lord in the Spirit. And the worship's not going on. And, and, and speaking in tongues are, is not going on. And the Spirit's not moving. And, and there's no really praise and worship, just a couple of songs being sung. Well, yeah, of course. Why? Because the fear of the Lord's not there. Because the Bible says, ye that fear the Lord, those who fear the Lord, the ones that fear the Lord, praise the Lord and glorify Him. And again, twice in the same verse, and fear Him. That's what happens. So when the fear of the Lord is not, is not there, is not present, then what? Well, you're not going to see much praise in the body. You're not going to see much praising going on in the body. And you're not going to see much glorifying going on in the body. Oh, but there's love, 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 and, and, and long-suffering. Yeah, how's that working out for you? How's that working out over the body? What's that doing to the body? Oh, just love every, everybody and just accept everything. And, and, and God is long-suffering. And, and don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, the Bible says fear the Lord and depart from evil. The Bible says if you fear the Lord and you obey His commandments, then blessings will come upon you. But if you don't fear the Lord, then curses will come upon you. Curses. Why? Because you're going to touch the unclean thing. And you're going to play with the world. And you're, and you're not going to submit yourself to the Lord. And you're not going to consecrate yourself to the Lord. And you're not going to pray every day. And you're not going to worship the Lord. And you're not going to obey His word. Scripture teaches us that if you fear the Lord, then praise Him. And if you fear the Lord, then glorify Him. And Psalms chapter 103, verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon everyone. So what it says, right? Upon them that fear Him. So you want the mercy of the Lord on your life? You want to have the mercy and the grace of the Lord moving in your life and upon your life? Well, you better fear Him. You better have a reverence for Him. Why? Because that's what Scripture says. Why should I fear the Lord? Because He can wipe you out in, in a twinkling of an eye. He can end your life in a twinkling of, of an eye. A judgment can fall on your life in a twinkling of an eye. Why? Because you refuse to make Him Lord and Savior and Master of your life. Because you refuse to get out of sin. Because you refuse to stop walking in the flesh. Because you continually love the world. And when you do those things, the scripture says, what? That you're close to being out of the world. You are close to being out of the world. Oh, that's rough. You better believe that's rough. And that's the kingdom of the Lord. And we need to be shaken and woken up to these truths. Because the devil's trying, trying to hide these truths under rocks. And hide these truths from, from individuals and from the body. You get people up there that, that, that speak nothing but love and, and grace and, and mercy and, and, and long-suffering and love and, and grace and mercy and long-suffering week after week and, and, and month after month. And these are the messages that they're hearing about God. And, and then they touch sin. And, 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 and they touch the things of the world. And they oh, don't worry about it. Oh, don't worry about it. God is long-suffering and God is merciful and, and, and God has grace. Don't, don't worry about it. No. You better worry about it. You better worry about it. Because those who live that, that way won't inherit the kingdom of God. And brethren who live that way, what? Are close to being kicked out of the kingdom of God, according to scripture. Oh, it's rough. Yeah, you better believe it's rough, but it's the kingdom of the Lord. Psalms chapter 25, verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he, sh he will show them his covenant. So here, you want to know the secrets of the Lord? You want to understand the secrets of the kingdom? Then they abide with people who fear Him. Who fear Him. You fear the Lord? Guess what? The Lord's going to show you some secrets. So, some secrets of the kingdom. 
and people walk around and say, oh yeah, you know, the disciples of Jesus, they were the 12 that walked with Jesus, and there was many around Jesus, and, and but he had his inner circle, and that's the closer ones to the minister and to the ministry, and that's the inner circle, and, and they were the ones who, who got to learn more from Jesus and know more from Jesus. They, they were better than everybody else because they walked with Jesus. You know what Scripture says? You want to have those secrets. You want the Lord to reveal some of those secrets to you on an individual basis? Well, you better fear him. You better fear him. Why? Oh, because he just wants you to fear him, because that's, that's what it is. No, because it's clean to fear the Lord. And it's a good thing to fear the Lord. Because Scripture says, when you fear the Lord, you'll depart from evil. You won't touch sin. You won't walk in the flesh. You won't love the world. You won't do evil. You won't do wrong if you fear the Lord. But if you don't fear the Lord, then you're not going to depart from evil. And if you don't depart from evil, then the Lord is not with you. He's not with you. You can sing your songs. You can go to church. You can do all that you want in your religious duties, but the Lord is not with you. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. So here scripture is teaching us what? If you have the fear of the Lord, what are you going to do? You're going to hate evil. Oh yeah, I, I, that, that person who smokes the cigarettes... That, that, that person who smokes the cigarettes in that mess. Oh, what a mess of smoking those cigarettes. And, and I, I went to the house there and, 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 and I tried to teach him a Bible study and the, and the smell of the smoke got on my clothes and it was so stinky and I had to get home and stick it in a separate bag and, and wash it separately because it was so messy to have that, that, that cigarette smoke. And, 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 and that guy who was drinking out there and going to the bar and, and drinking alcohol and I had to talk to him and, and, and it, he's such a mess and he's there living in sin. What a messy fellow he is and oh that's so evil to do those things and I'm so glad I don't do those things and I'm so glad I hate those things you know what God considers evil you know what the Lord considers evil according to scripture not obeying his word not obeying his commandments not submitting to scripture not following what he tells you to do that that's what evil is to the Lord now you you may cut it down to fruits right and you may pick on a fruit. Oh, well, this man is smoking. And, and this man is drinking. And, and that's the evil deed to do. Yeah, that's a sinner. Of course that's an evil deed to do. And that's what they're going to do. They're stuck in sin. And the nature of sin abides in them. And it pushes them to do wrong. And it pushes them to do things that are, that are against the word of God and that are against their own flesh and, and their own soul. Guy drinking the booze there, he's killing his liver. The guy drinking the booze there, he, he's not so much good with his family. Unless he's a happy-go-lucky drunk. But most of the time, they're not a happy-go-lucky drunk. They're, they're an upset drunk and a bitter drunk. And they treat their wife with bitterness. And they treat their children with bitterness. Because they're drinking. And they're stuck in sin. And, and they're stuck in that, in that position. And then we want to look at them and call them evil. They're not evil. Yeah, they're, they're, they're evil What as concerning breaking the, the will of the Lord. As concerning breaking the law of the Lord. Yes, that's evil. Absolutely. And that's that spirit that Paul was talking about in his epistle, right? When he says you want to judge them that are without, but you don't want to judge them that are within. You want to sit there and judge those that are without, but you don't want to judge those that are within. Well, those that are within, you know what is evil to God? You know what is evil to God? Not making Him Lord and Savior. Not making Him Master. Again, walking in the flesh. In that stinking, dirty, rotten flesh. The thing that God abhors when he looks down. He hates it. He doesn't like it. Why? Because he just doesn't like it. That's why. No, because of, of the fruit of the flesh. And what the flesh does. And what the flesh accomplishes towards others and in this world. And that's why God's ha God hates it. Every murderer. Everyone who's murdered. Right? Everyone who's killed someone that came through the flesh. Everyone who's beaten up somebody and stomp their head, and kick their teeth in, that's come from the flesh. Everyone who's become a drunk, and thrown up their, bleh, over, the, over the toilet bowl, because they got so drunk, and, and made themselves sick, sick in their flesh, and things were spinning around. And I've, I've only drank twice in my life, twice, when I was a young teenager. I didn't like the taste. I'm just talking from experience of what I've learned in the world, and other people telling me, waking up and spinning room and can't do nothing, and pounding headache, and throwing up over the, over the toilet bowl. 
or another work of the flesh, right? And, and being prideful and being haughty and, and, and not loving. More works of the flesh. So that's why God hates the flesh. That's why God doesn't want us in the flesh. That's why God considers the flesh evil. And those that walk in the flesh who are brethren and do those things are enemies of Christ and are considered evil by the Lord. And they did evil before the Lord. And they did evil in the sight of the Lord. Why? Because they didn't listen to the words of the Lord. They didn't follow the covenant. They didn't obey the Lord. They didn't give their all to the Lord. And when they did that, that was evil in the sight of the Lord. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is to hate pride. If you have the fear in the Lord, if you have the fear of the Lord inside of you, you're going to hate pride. You're going to hate it. You mean you're going to hate people that are prideful? That's not what Scripture says. It says you're going to hate pride. And pride is a spirit. And the fruit of pride is what? You are unteachable. You are unteachable. You think you know it all. You think you got all the answers. You, you, you think you got everything, everything under control and everything, all the T's crossed and all the I's dot. And when you get like that, then you're unteachable. And that's pride inside of you. And when someone comes to talk to you, and when someone comes to show you that you might be doing something wrong, guess what? That pride rises up. That spirit rises up. Don't you tell me that. And, and don't you say that to me. Don't you know who I am? Look, I got what I got in my pocket here. And look what I got on my wall here. It, it's signed. Look, it's signed by, by someone higher than me. And it gives me credentials. And, and, and it gives me position. How, how can you come and tell me something? Who are you? Who are you to tell me something? And it makes a man uncorrectable. And it keeps a man in error. And not only does it keep that man in error, it keeps all those in that man's world in error. Because that man will go around, right? And that man will teach his errors. And so that's why the Lord says that, that the fear of the Lord is to hate pride. Why? Because there's a lot, a lot of consequences to pride. A lot, a lot of consequences to pride that I don't even have time to mention them in this video. But there's a nice book that's called the Holy Bible. And if you do a quick research on the word pride and see the, the trouble that it creates and the problems that it creates, then you'll understand why the fear of the Lord is to hate pride. Vomit that disgusting thing up in the spirit. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Vomit our pride up in the spirit. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says, Scripture says, is to hate arrogancy. Arrogancy. And what is arrogancy? Arrogancy is a state of acting superior or self-important in an offensive manner. In an offensive manner. Well, you can't tell me nothing. You, you, can't, you can't tell me anything. Why? Because I'm qualified. I, I'm qualified. I'm a leader. I have a position. People follow me. Who are you to tell me anything? Who are you to say anything to me? Hey, how many times did they say that to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? You read the Gospels of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many times did Jesus Christ confront that spirit? Many times. That spirit of arrogancy. That, well, I'm a Pharisee. I, I'm a ruler of the Jews. Who are you to tell me anything? Look at my look at my diploma. Look at my credentials. Who are you to say anything to me? And how dare you come and say anything to me? Oh, and I just love the way the Lord dealt with these people. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving me an example of what to do with these type of people. Hallelujah. And the fear of the Lord is to hate the evil way. And here comes the Pharisee. Come on, Mr. Pharisee, I'll give you the mic. Here you go. You ready? Mr. Pharisee, what is the evil way of what is the evil way that the Lord is talking about? Well, sir, that that evil way that the, that the Lord is is bringing forth here in the Scripture and that He's explaining to us and He's He's bringing forth to us is He's saying, well, well, those evil people out there who are doing evil things and evil deeds, uh, don't don't be like those people. Uh, thank God that you're not like those people. Thank God you're not like the sinner. Thank thank God that you do not smoke, and thank God that you do not go to the movie theaters. And thank God that you do not drink, that you're not like those people. No, no, you're not like those people. You're not walking in, in, in the evil way like those people. That, that's what it means. Well, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Pharisee. I appreciate that. Here, I'll give you a description of one evil way, or maybe two. Depends how, how far I'm going to go here. 
I'll give you a good description of an evil way. Don't surrender your heart. Play with sin. Stay in the flesh. Don't have a prayer life. Don't fast. Don't read your word. Don't pray for the lost. Don't have the fear of the Lord, of the Lord in you. Walk in the flesh again. And then come to church with what's in your pocket. And, and, and stand on the pulpit. And, and sing some songs. And, and play some, some music instruments. And, and even, dare I say, preach. Preach the word. Preach the word up there. The powerful, magical word called the Bible. Preach it up there. That's an evil way. That's a very evil way. It's so evil, that's so evil in the eyes of the Lord, what? That he says in Scripture that you've now become an enemy of, of his. And that you're in danger of being taken out of the world. That's how evil that is to the Lord. Here's another evil way. Here's another evil way. Well, let's bypass what Scripture says in order to preach the word. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. The church is not praising. The Spirit's not flowing. The Spirit's not manifesting. But yet bypass that. And let's preach the Word. Let's preach the Word. Time for prayer. Time for prayer. Let, let's, let's pray to the Lord. Come on, let's pray to the Lord. But you didn't worship. You didn't worship the Lord. And, and now you want to pray to the Lord. You didn't praise Him. You didn't get into the Spirit. And now you want to preach the Word. Well, in God's eyes, in God's eyes, those are evil ways. Evil ways. And if I fear the Lord, if I'm walking in the fear of the Lord, then, then guess what? I'm going to hate that. I'm going to hate that. You ever hate anything in life? You ever hate anything in life? Most of us, most of us have, right? Because of the sin nature in us, it expresses the, the feeling of hate. It manifests the fruit of hate in us whether before we met the Lord or even maybe after we met the Lord, after we came into the kingdom of the Lord, as we wrestled with this nature. But, but you know that feeling of hate, right? And the Lord is telling us, when you fear the Lord, then you, you're going to hate that evil way. You're going to hate the evil way. Well, well, if I'm exposed to the evil way, then what's going to start rising up in me is a hate towards that evil way. And I don't want to feel that. I don't. I don't. If I'm not around the evil way, then I don't have to see it functioning, right? It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that I don't hate it. But, but at least I don't have to walk in it. At least I don't have to be around it. Because when I'm around it, then my hate keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. And that's not fair. That's not fair to any child of God. And what does the Lord say? The Lord says, depart from evil. Depart from the evil way, right? That's what the Lord says. That's what the, the Lord commands His children to do. The book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 31. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. They were multiplied. So the churches had rest when? When they were walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. And what else? They were multiplied. What? When they were walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. But a lot of us just want to talk about the comfort of the Holy Ghost. A lot of us just want to talk about that comfort. And in that comfort we want to talk about the love and the long-suffering of the Lord. And don't worry about it. And, and, and don't stress yourself out about it. And that's not scriptural. That voice is not scriptural. You need to fear the Lord. And you need to worry about it. If, if you're stuck in sin, if you're playing in sin, if you're living wrong, if you're touching the things of the world, willfully, willfully, then yeah, that's dangerous. But Scripture, has, scripture here says they were walking in the fear of the Lord. Oh, well, God, I, I fear you because you're God. It's easy to say, I fear you because you're God. But you know what? Actions speak louder than word. And Scripture showed us tonight, what? That if, if you fear God, then there's going to be some works in your life, right? There's going to be some works in your life. Well, you're going to praise the Lord. And you're going to glorify the Lord. Those are two works that are going to be in your life. You're going to depart from evil. And evil in the New Testament time and evil to the Lord 
there, there's, there's many ways, but a little bit of qualifying it here. You're going to depart from evil. You're going to get out of the flesh. You're going to stop walking after the flesh. You're going to stop touching the things of the world, and you're going to consecrate your life to the Lord. You're going to consecrate your heart and consecrate your life to the Lord. This vessel shall not be unclean anymore. Mark this, and trust me, and, and mark what I'm saying here. You don't want the Lord Jesus Christ moving in the Spirit to put fear into the body. To bring the reverence and the fear of the Lord back into the body. Because it's not a fun experience. And it's not something that you want your body to have to go through. But out of His deep and passionate love that He has for us, and the burning love that He has for us to keep us as His children, and keep us in His kingdom. God will move in the Spirit to bring back the fear and bring back the reverence for the Lord. Because when we do not have the fear of the Lord in us individually and in us in the body, then we are missing out of a lot in the kingdom of God. A lot. Scripture says, if the fear is not there, the saints will not depart from evil. They will not do what is right before the Lord. You can tell them how much God loves them. You can tell much how much God is long-suffering for them. There are some things that will not happen to the saint or to the body itself unless the fear of the Lord is present. And because the, the Lord loves us and He wants us to have those blessings and He wants us to have that side of Him, He will bring fear back to the body and fear back to the individual. Acts chapter 19, right? We see, what, we see what's going on. Verse 14, And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and the chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against him, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So these seven sons of Sceva, right, they tried to rebuke a spirit. They tried to rebuke a spirit that was in a person, and this spirit leaped on them, overcame them, which means beat them up, beat them up physically, and I'm not saying that's going to happen to you in the, in the Lord. Don't draw a conclusion there. But And that spirit prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house. They went running out of the house, running away from this, from this man with the evil spirit, and they were naked and they were wounded, the Bible says. And, and look at the next verse. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also, dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was magnified. So God used this situation here in the book of Acts, what? To cause fear to fall on them all. And with that fear falling on them all, what happened? The name of the Lord Jesus Christ was magnified. So what's Scripture teaching us? What are we seeing in Scripture? That, that God can use evil spirits, right, to bring fear back into the body. And you don't want that. You don't want to go down that road. You, 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 it's better for you to preach the fear of the Lord back into your saints and, and, and get the fruit of that fear by working on it with the Holy Word of God and the Spirit of the Lord than just ignoring it and, 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 and not walking in it and keeping the fear of the Lord away from the body because God's going to move. God is going to move. You are going to force His hand because He loves us. Real love. He loves us. And in doing so, you see the circumstance that happened here in order for fear to fall on them? Well, that's the degree of circumstances that has to come. That's the degree of circumstances that has to come.